All right, part three. Now, uh, the last will and testament. I cannot emphasize how important this is. A simple will is not going to cost you that much money. What will it, would it be? Two hundred dollars? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I had one of those ten dollar a month legal plans. In fact, I had two of them. It was great, but that was that was years ago. That was in the eighties, you know. And their deal included uh, one free simple will. And we're talking simple, but hey, it's it's great. These things are not centrally registered in the United States as far as any details, I believe. But there is or was an association. If someone has died and you want to find out if they had life insurance, there is some place in the United States, it is a central registry to indicate to you yes they had it and which company so fine you you find the company you contact them and you say hey I'm, I'm I'm the daughter of so and so who who died and um apparently they have life insurance with you or okay the simple will really is simple and since I do a lot well a lot yeah of creative stuff, movies, whatever, writing, art, a anything. I left my intellectual property estate. I call it my literary estate. It's just a habit, but it's it's more than that to somebody. Um, because otherwise, anybody who you would like to carry on perhaps earning royalties or having the rights to your stuff um, won't get it. <laughs> They're just not going to get it. They have no claim to it. You have to will it to them. It's very easy. I did this on a simple will the first time. And I believe I still have the same simple will for the United States because all I have in the United States anymore is uh, the literary estate. I'm French now, so I have dual citizenship, so I have uh, really everything over here. But we're talking mostly to Americans, but I believe a lot of people can apply this wherever they are to themselves in a general sense. How's that? These are things to consider. Periodically, it might be every year, every six months if you're neurotic, um, regularly, you have to reassess everything you have set up and crunch those numbers. No qualitative analysis here, please. Quantitative analysis, please. And you figure out how things are, and you get your picture, your life picture, especially your financial picture. You just do it. And make any adjustments necessary. Hey, maybe you can scale back, you know? I don't know. Prices tend to go up, so... Um, or modify the will, or anything. That's probably enough on the American will. Um, for a more complicated will, obviously, you go to a lawyer and you pay and you get a more complicated will. Okay? I'm just talking about people. So it's clear who's going to get your stuff, anything you own, any intellectual property, anything, anything. Any legacy. It's a legacy. Who's going to get your clothes, your bike? I don't know. You know what I mean.
Also, um, of course, for example, your life insurance, you can change the beneficiaries anytime you want, as often as you want. It's, it, there's no charge for it. You just have to put it in writing, <laughs> you know, mail it. I'm old-fashioned. Uh, when I was in the legal profession in the United States, uh, a fax or an email did not constitute um, legal delivery. It was it was nice to tell them something was coming, but without the document messengered or delivered and a receipt and certified or registered mail or anything, you know, it wasn't considered legally done, delivered. And that provides a loophole. Okay. On to investing. So, I'll skip all the details about what I left the country with and how that was because there are other videos about that already and the Travelo Tour uh, Travelo Tours uh, channel the long interview with me really goes into this moving everything immigration so over here one of the f first things I insisted upon I got married soon after I got here to a French national. I insisted upon a simple French will. So we got one. And the other details I don't think you need to know. I talked to him and he agreed because he's thrifty and frugal that we would immediately, although we didn't even have jobs, start saving systematically. So again, we did, and we're still, we've never gone below that minimum. Not, I didn't, and we haven't, not in the United States from the time I was 20 to now. I didn't stop, and we haven't stopped for disability, unemployment, nothing. I went without a lot of meals, you know, to, to meet my my commitment to myself and other things. You have to do this. If you can't even save, for example, twenty dollars a week, something's wrong. And you better fix it. And don't think you can just you know, sell your stuff, because frankly, I'm going to be blunt, and this is going to sound rude, but for the last few years, it, 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 it strikes me that a heck of a lot of Americans don't have two nickels to rub together, and if they do, they don't want to buy your stuff, okay? Be realistic. I talked to two preppers in 2012 who had to leave the country, no, they're not criminals, and they had to abandon their preps. It was it, it's very expensive to ship your stuff and they it wasn't even legal to ship that stuff. And they were really angry. So over a horribly long period of time Ten years of deprivation, not even owning a bed, to give you an example. We kept doing this, saving, saving, saving. I have one of those tiny e emergency funeral expense things. It's, it's funny, I've had it for so long here in France. Uh, it's it's three euros a month. <laughs> it sounds ridiculous, and it's 
it, it is going to help. It's not going to pay for it, but it's, it's really going to help. <laughs> uh, three euros a month. Must have been over 15 years I've been doing that. I don't, I, something like that. Now, I recommend fixed annuities from a quality company. Again, New York Life comes to mind. I have a few bones to pick with them personally, but that's neither here nor there. They were a quality company when I worked for them. You needed $10,000 at the time to buy one. And they were great. And normally you held them until you were until you retired. If you took them earlier, it was just like closing an IRA or a 401k, you know. Pay your 10%, have to claim it as ordinary income and pay taxes on it. Variable annuities, I don't recommend. I did sell them. I mean, I, I was able to sell them. I did not sell one. I could not recommend this for anybody. <laughs> the one I bought myself, it was... The performance was mediocre. You know, I closed that one years before I even left the... Not years. Before I left the United States. because I was just like, that's it, you know. I've learned my lesson. Mutual funds. I don't recommend them. I sold those too. I sold good ones. But I told people, you can lose everything with a mutual fund. There's no safety in those things. You're going to pay a money manager and trust them with your money? Yeah, but I don't know anything about investing. Well, you better learn, buddy. It isn't hard. You can go to the library, get a book. There's no library. Then there's the internet. If you're watching me now, you're on the internet somewhere. I don't know what to do with my hands, sorry. I didn't sleep last night. <laughs> I'm tense. Uh, okay. You know, if, if you're stupid and you want to stay stupid and ignorant, don't come crying to me. You know. Don't go crying to anyone. You're going to end up a burden somehow to somebody, to something. And you're going to be in the soup. Uh, let's see. I have not invested in any U.S. Let's say, let's say stock. Since I left the company, uh, country. Well, it is a company, but you know what I mean. Since I expatriated, I've only been investing in European stuff. I was an Asian equities person over here, but another story. I don't. N know those things well enough to do them for myself now. Europe I can handle. France I can definitely handle. So I pretty much just stick to the knitting as they say. And I suggest that you do that for yourself. Stick to the knitting. You know, if it works, if you understand it, if it if you do well with it, keep doing it. Why not? Until until it's not working. And if you're wise, you can predict that it might turn sour, get out. And reposition yourself. Oh, diversification. I should talk about that. Ooh. 
It's very important. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Ooh, I don't like these platitudes. These little slogans. They're generally always a good way to <laughs> screw up your life. But really, don't put all your eggs in one basket, okay? So I'm going to... I'm going to stick to that platitude. Uh, maybe divide your portfolio, if you want to call it that, into 10% of this and 10% of this. Everything by 10% until you reach 100%. And personally, I don't recommend more than 10% in precious metals. I never have. 20%, the 20% thing, that's for like really knowledgeable people. And I never, well, I, I did work with a gold analyst, but you know what I mean. People who really know this, there aren't that many of them. Um, so, 10%. 10% of your portfolio in precious metals. Yeah, I've always liked that. I've liked that since 83, actually, when I started buying gold. I like gold. I like platinum. Silver's been fun, I, but I just have a little bit of it. I like physical, too. Um... Enough on precious metals. I'm not going to address cryptocurrencies because I feel they're essentially problematic and I'll just leave it at that. They're, they're too problematic for me. But for anybody, I think they're problematic. I don't, I don't, I'm not into cryptocurrencies. It'd be nice if they worked, but you can't change the... At right now, reality is you can't change the inherent weakness. And then it's up to you to decide how you're going to allocate each 10%. There are no hard and fast rules. It's just that 10% of da na 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 na, that's that's diversified and it's easy to quantify and yeah. and then you have to figure what it is you want when you want it. Keep your life balanced. Make sure that what you want is what's good for you. Free your mind. All right. It might be real estate. Uh, for us, in early 2012, first half of 2012, it was actually penny stocks. Josh Galt has uh, a great mini series, uh, the best I've heard on an investment strategy for if you want to do penny stocks, which are not appropriate for most people, but you can you can make a lot of money very quickly with them. We did. How much? Uh, enough to buy a new European car. Uh, within that time frame, we're talking way less than six months. Let's say a quarter. Uh, a nice new European car. Okay, it might be, yeah, real estate. I helped my mother get her real estate license in the 70s. I helped her study for it. And she was in residential for the rest of her career. Uh, I've never worked in it. I don't like debt. Here in France, the rule of thumb is one 
breadwinner in the family earning minimum wage and there are various minimum wages here in France but you know you get the idea has to be able to pay off whatever the mortgage is in nine years otherwise wait and save some more the standard mortgage here is ten years when I told people here when I got here twenty years ago that about like a, perhaps a 30 year fixed rate, they were like 30 years, that's crazy. They started introducing them here just a few years ago. But they're very newfangled. And the French are very slow to change and they're gonna take a long time to catch on. And that's a long period of time. Do you really want a 30 year mortgage? Ooh. You know, I don't even like 10 years. But what I will say about real estate for myself, because that's what this person asked for, is my thing, as well as a, a, a little bit of advice, which I'm doing. We did buy uh, some real estate, uh, I think it was a month ago, and we get the key later this month. And we worked out a deal with my widowed mother-in-law here and uh, it's a 10-year mortgage fixed rate 2.55% and she's going to live in it until she can't anymore and or until yeah until she dies or has to go someplace else the last place you know the nursing home, whatever, hospice, I don't know. So that will be ours. I just don't like debt. However, I also don't like absolutes. You have to quantify Maybe the, the the tax situation where you are is, and the rate you can get, and the terms you can get, are so wonderful. You'd be crazy not to borrow the money. Just take it easy, okay? You don't want to lose your, your, your real estate. Please, don't lose your home. And just just don't. I personally feel like have enough cash available so that you could actually take care of, of whatever the mortgage is, have some legal arrangement, uh, a will. Everybody needs their wills good and some arrangement like what we did with the mother-in-law. Uh, okay review it periodically assess it and modify as needed what else well you know other investments bonds boy I haven't been in bonds in years and the only U.S government bonds I ever invested in that I recall were just ordinary series EE or whatever they were savings bonds uh, I find that the return on them in the United States from what I can see from over here is lamentable I don't know why you would do that. And you really need to read up on it, research. There's a lot on the internet. I heard from somebody recently say, well, 
if I've seen a video on it, then I'm not going to invest in it because I know that I've missed the boat or whatever. But really, there is a lot of just purely informational stuff out there, such as what I'm doing now. Not telling you, you do this, I'm selling this, you know, uh, I'm not doing that. Okay, I will consider what I'm going to do for the next and probably last part.